so hi everyone uh, my name is Anna Erceg and today I am representing a group of students that worked on a hands-on project number six modeling interstellar shock observations led by Sylvie and Trem uh, so during the last two weeks uh, Trem and Sylvie uh, taught us a lot about Paris theorem one-dimensional shock code which is a code that treats multi-fluid MHD shocks in the diffuse ISM it's good for modeling jets and outflows from forming stars slow AGB winds and supernova remnant shells and many other things. Um, this shock models plane parallel shocks, uh, which means we have no curvature, and the magnetic field is parallel to the shock velocity. Uh, in these conditions, the two main types of shock that we can have are J-shock and C-shock that are shown in this image here. You can see that the J-shock, the blue line here, reaches much higher temperatures and the C-shock uh, reaches lower temperature for the same uh, energy. Uh, so the first thing we had to do was get to know the model. Uh, we were playing with different input parameters, uh, so different shock types, C and J shocks, different velocity, magnetic field, and turning the radiation field on or off. Uh, and then we would examine different uh, outputs, so evolution of different physical parameters and uh, abundance, uh, abundances of different species and line intensity. For example, um, this is one thing that we tried out. So we, uh, for a J-shock, we tried different velocities. And uh, here in this plot on the uh, left, you can see how the temperature of these different uh, models changes with time. So here we found out, uh, found out that if we have a shock of higher velocity, for instance, this green line, we will get a higher temperature. Um, and we also uh, found out that uh, temperature and velocity, um, actually uh, temperature uh, changes with uh, the square of velocity. So this is a log log diagram. And here we have a, a linear fit with a slope of two. Uh, so trying out these different input parameters and examining different outputs, we could kind of get a feeling about um, what do different parameters change uh, in our shocks. Uh, of course, uh, when you're modeling something, the most important part is how to compare these models with observations. Uh, and Trem and Sylvie uh, showed us two ways that we could do this with uh, some post-processing products uh, from the Paris Durham shock code. Uh, one of those is line profile of H2 emission, which is so shown here in this in this plot on the right. Uh, here we introduced a new parameter, which is the viewing angle, which uh, basically gives us the angle between line of sight of the observer and the velocity of the shock and the changing that parameter, uh, we see that the line profiles uh, shift um, and they also become broader, uh, but the surface uh, underneath all of these curves uh, is the same no matter from which angle are we viewing the, uh, the shock. Uh, another thing that we can use to compare our models to the observation is the excitation diagram uh, given here in this image. And the excitation diagram can give us information on the total column density and uh, on the uh, lower limit to the shock temperature. Now, without going into any details, I will just say that the local slope of these curves here uh, gives us the temperature. temperature. The steeper the slope, the lower the temperature. So uh, as you can see here, the C shock in this area here is steeper, which means that it has lower temperature, which corresponds to the plot that I showed you uh, on the first slide. Uh, and at the end, uh, we compared um, so our models with observations. Uh, Trem uh, provided us with, observa uh, with observational data from Neufeld uh, 19 um, and with a model that he knew uh, fits well to this data because we simply didn't have time to uh, try out all the different parameters. Uh, but here you can see the results that we got. So um, the observational data is here giving like this uh, histogram step-like uh, curve and smooth curves are our models. Uh, and uh, we found that the best fit we get for the viewing angle of 60 degrees. 
Um, also, we compared uh, the observations with the excitation diagrams. Uh, here you can see the model is this uh, green dots, and here we have the observations. Uh, and you can see that although we have uh, still room to improve this model, uh, even this very uh, simple test that we did shows uh, quite well, uh, quite well results. Um, at the end, I would just like to thank the organizers for organizing this school and give a very special thanks to Sylvie and Trem, who took their time to teach us a lot about these shock models. Um, thank you all. Thank you. So there is a question uh, on the Slack. What is the power law index for Tmax versus velocity input? Does this indicate any physics? Uh, power law index that would be a slope of two so the temperature is proportional to the to the square of velocity if i am uh, correct okay uh, and otherwise I, I was just curious about the the model in itself so uh, maybe i missed it but what is the the geometry that you assume how does it work is it a 1d model um, do you have a density profile uh, so it's a one-dimensional dimension, model, um, a plane parallel shock, and the magnetic field is um, parallel to the shock velocity. Okay, but you can still you can still do relative transfer in an, uh, an angle compared to the to the slab because you uh, have a viewing angle. Uh, yes, we can we can also change the viewing angle. Yeah. Uh, but not uh, so not the inclination just the viewing angle in the, in the, the electric plane mm -hmm. so like okay thank you and just final the density is constant so we we put the uh, values at the beginning of the mm -hmm. when is a fixed parameter that we decide when we run the code okay thanks <laughs>